how I want to get uh, a bit of an idea of how was the week. I know some took it more seriously than others. There's always ups and downs. Sometimes we just do just one day. Sometimes we just think about it. Sometimes we actually do it. Uh, we're all on a different journey, but the key is to understand <coughs> that eventually it's going to get better. Never give up. The Yitzhara just says, oh, you didn't do so much this week. What's the point? Just give it up. That's the voice of the Yitzhara. He's so smart and uh, he's doing everything to uh, make us give up. So that's uh, the first thing. Second thing we have to understand, we have to remember. The only point of being from, the only point of doing mitzvot, the only point, thank you, the only point of uh, giving me water is for you to work on your midot. This, the point is to change. If we don't change, we're just like the same guy that looks religious, that does religious stuff. But you didn't change who you are. You didn't change your personality. You didn't change your character trait. You didn't change how good you are. You, you're just not different than a non-Jew who lives a, a happy, good life and is a good guy. So why would you live a life like that? It's boring. It's, it's, it's nonsense. It's, it's, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your life. The whole point and the greatest, and the greatest way to be um, happy is to feel you're changing, that you are transforming. Transforming. So you are Shabbat, that's a transformative experience, then yes, you feel alive. Because if you don't transform, you're dead. It's just like, you know, there's a reason why the line goes like that, to stay alive, when it's not, it's not changing. Unless your life has ups and downs, you, you know you're not alive. Um, so, I'm so happy you guys are here. That means you want to change. There's hope in the world. You might be the ones chosen to bring. Ireland. We are, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to speak for God because I, who I am, I don't know. But I know you guys are. I'm not. But maybe I don't know. Many God, right? Right. So, so, uh, but we have to understand that it might, it might, it might look like you know sometimes like yeah, you know, you have just a few guys, you know, they, you know, they trying to be from, they're trying to be happy, they do some mitzvot. Lost in Pomona, Monty, you know, nobody knows about us. But no, no, nobody knew about Rabbi Shimon Yochai. He didn't have a minion when he died. Rabbi Shimon Yochai didn't have a minion. No one said Kaddish for him. He had seven people. Yeah. Rabbi Shimon Yochai came to, to his rabbi. Who is rabbi, rabbi Shimon Yochai's rabbi? Yochai. No, Rabbi Shimon Yochai no. is rabbi. Oh. Uh, he's not, yeah, he's rabbi for himself, but who is his rabbi? Oh, yeah. Everybody's ready. I don't know. Well, he's ready. He's ready. What? Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Kiva. 24,000 students. They all died. He had five real students. One of them was Rabbi Shema Yochai. And Rabbi Shema Yochai came to Rabbi Kiva and said, Rabbi, I don't understand. I'm teaching like pearls of Torah. I'm teaching great things. And I have no students. I have nine students. He says, it's enough that you have those ones to change the world. Actually, he says, just you and your son in the world will be enough. Because Hashem Yechai achieved a level where that showed how you can be married with God in this world. That's what God wants. God wants you to be in love with him, but to live it. Not just like, oh yeah, it's a nice idea. Yeah, Hashem, I love you, Lecha Dodi. Uh, can you feel it? Can you live it? Can you get excited about Hashem? Can you, right? That's just like you think of a girl that, or a, a man that you are interested in, you know? That's what Hashem wants. Why do you think Hashem gave you those experience of men and women? So, so that we can have the same thing with Hashem. Hashem is real. Hashem is behind all the physical stuff. So we have to try to make it real. Um, so Rabbi Kiva didn't, uh, Rabbi Shima, Rabbi Kiva says, don't worry. One day your light will be revealed. Who has the most people coming on his grave on his yard side? No, Rabbi Shimon Bayechai. Now, close, he's number two, maybe. But Rabbi Shimon Bayechai has the most people, millions, I mean, hundreds of thousands. Rabbi Nachman, there's not a lot of people. Right, not his yard side. Right, right, right. Don't say, I'm speaking about the yard side. Yeah? 
<laughs> yes, the biggest birthday party. Yeah, Absolutely. Birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> no, no, okay. So, um, so the idea is that even though we're small individual uh, that nobody necessarily uh, knows, I mean, uh, speaking for me, but we, we can make a huge difference in the world because you don't realize what your neshama is. We don't know ourselves. We don't know what your neshama is capable of. And, um, but when we come as a team, and that team, that chabura, that throughout every generation, the Ramchal has a chabura, the Rav Shemayel has a chabura, the Bar Shem has a chabura, it's few people, three, four, five, six. And hopefully when this is over, and maybe we'll go again, this, if you're interested, if you want to go deep, you know, uh, then I, I, there's something, there's a book called Bnei Machshava Torah. Bnei Machshava Torah, which is um, about getting to experience the divine in this world. Um, it's from the Esh Kodesh, and he had a, a small chabura, a small community, and for only self people who want to commit to, to do it. And together they will meet and work on themselves and it's very powerful. So if you're interested, uh, at the end of the beginning and beginning of the end, uh, maybe you can join. So wait, after 10 weeks, you will wrap by the Rock Yeah, Kodesh. exactly. When you Rock we're ready for that. Okay, so, um, so I want to hear from you. Uh, any experience of this week? How did this week go? Any insight? Uh, how did you feel about the, the zeals? It was hard, it was easy? I found it interesting. Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah, that's a great idea. We sometimes um, tend to want to disregard and forget about the things that we know is not good for us. We just like put it on the side, but actually it's not the right thing. If you want to be responsible, if you want to be like uh, honest with yourself and not a hypocrite, it's like, yeah, right now I'm going to see. I took more than and, the and, and it's a very, it's a very, what? I took more than the part, just one of the members. Yes. Because I think when you, when you do or whatever, I thought you had to do just one of the members. So everything, everything is, goes closer to God because you're talking to God and you see like the enrollment and everything. So it's including everything. True. No, true. Absolutely. But I think the way she explained it, the way, this is the way I understand it, that like before you actually do the action, not just at the end of the day where you go, okay, I did this good, I did that. This 100%. And you should also say, okay, I did that as good and not ignore it. But I think on a more like day-to-day uh, -day basis, meaning on the more action level, that I'm truly right, no, right now, I'm going to uh, not watch something appropriate. Right now, I'm going to eat something that's not healthy for me. Right now, I'm going to uh, sleep late, right? Or, you know, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, wake up late or I'm, whatever it is that we do that is not good for us. And you say, okay, I'm honest with that. I know, but at least I know. Because if you don't know and you just put it on the side, it's even worse. You're, you're, you're kind of trying to lie to yourself. And that's completely ridiculous because it's, it's much harder after to just allow you to face yourself. Don't, don't be afraid to face your, your, you know that when you actually sin, God gives you that energy for you to sin at that moment. So if, if God really hated you, he wouldn't give you that energy. God loves you and he allows you to take his energy to go against him. The thing is, it's like I give you money and you throw my money in the fire in front of me. That's what we do with Hashem when we sin. But God said, not, not bad. It's okay. I'll, I'll wait. I'm patient. I love you. I know you're good inside. Just, just don't ignore it. Because if you ignore it, you know, I took more than part of when I woke up in the morning and how can I get closer to God today? Mm -hmm. So I never thought of that before. Excellent. Just two minutes in the morning while I got to work. That's, that's excellent. That's, the, the, that's what I'm looking for. I mean, 
I think this is what we need. We start with little things. We, we, we have a tendency like, to see that huge mitzvah, uh, no, no, it's those little things in, during your day that changes everything. So it's, it's Baruch Hashem, it's good. Any other? I'm not sure that I had a lot of people for people. Because you can't give you that example. <laughs> I know. I drink a lot of things, so I'm like, I'm drinking. <laughs> I'm drinking. <laughs> I'm drinking. <laughs> right. So, that, but. <laughs> It's a, yeah, but, but you know, even if it stops you one time during the week and say, you know what, this time I'm going to drink water. This already at that moment, it, you're a hero. Even before that, the awareness, that's what you're mm. focused on. Yes. So like, okay, next time I'm aware, maybe next time I'm making a stop because I'm not just ignoring it. Yes. Okay. Any, anything you want to say or you're good? Um, whatever. I worked on something. But oh. Okay. You good? Not for me? You good? Okay. If you're good, I'm good. All right. So let's let's um, continue. Not good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's next. Nice. Okay. Now this week, guys, it's so exciting. It's Zrizus. Woo! Zio. What's Zrizus? Zrizus. Zrizus. Okay. Zio. And we just had Pasha Spinchas, right? Last week was Spinchas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Spinchas was Zrizus. Uh, on, the, on a higher level than this was more than Zrizus, this was, uh, it was a Kina, like that was Jerusalem for Hashem, um, highest level of Zrizus. But Zrizut, Zil, he went with the spear while someone was doing something wrong and acted right away and um, brought back what just Zrizus. What does Zrizus mean? Oh, so we're, 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 what is Zrizut? Definition of Zizu. Alacrity. It focuses on doing good, the asset of. It's the promptness in the performance of the mitzvot and seeing them through uh, complete completion. Meaning seeing them that, uh, that you're gonna do it. Sorry, there's a double word here, but seeing that you are finishing, finishing them completely from beginning to end. So he's gonna, he, he gives a few ideas of what it looks when you have a Zizu. Um, so you know you have to know your nature goes against it, right? So in the morning, up, you know, snooze one time, snooze two times. That's not the reason. You just wake up, it's like, mute ani, right? And then and then the final chanot is to make a like song. You know, like those kids they wake up in the morning out of the crib. <laughs> you know, and you say like they want to they want to jump and just that's how you have to be. You just woke up. God just gave you your soul back. You didn't have to come back, but he gave you a soul back, full of energy. You can change the world today. It's not a switch, I wakes you up. I feel like he breaks you up. <laughs> Who? God, God, you just put a switch. Um, when he, he does it the software, but you have to use that and Walk on your own, then you know it's like hey, don't you know, like your your tati or mommy comes and hey, pocket of let's wake up. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Do that. <laughs> let's go, right? Anyway, um, uh, parents who are nice, like me, uh, <laughs> I, I wake them, uh, you know, softly, and um, your kids didn't turn out to be like me, no, well, <laughs> <laughs> listen, there's no we can we, can, we can't. We can't even compare how each one is, so it's a one word. Um, but what's happening is that um, once you do it softly, then after you have the kid can choose to go, okay, do wake up and do it everything on his own. So the idea is that um, you have to know your nature goes against it. You are gonna, you're going to fight. Your body is fighting your reason. The body is like, American style, you know, the same time, walk like that, you know, like, we, we, we don't want, we don't like the pressure. Um, and, and, and therefore, you know, you have to fight to, to get into Zrizut. So that's number one. Number two, you need to fight harder to do Torah and good deeds. Not only your nature goes against it. What is deed? The uh, actions, good actions. Mitzvot, I say. Uh, you need to fight harder to do Torah and good deeds, meaning you, you, you're going to have to fight even harder than just 
um, yeah, you 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 doing. Up, get up and get yeah, like yeah, this waking up and it's going to shore. <laughs> right? Okay, waking up. Okay, okay, going to shore. Exactly. Right? So you know you're gonna have the body is gonna fight it. You, if you know that in advance, it's different because if you don't know your enemy, right, or you don't know how he proceeds, right, this this. Uh, the, the whole Ramchal, the most important word of the whole Ramchal, you know what it is in the whole Messiah Sashaim, according to me, is Tachbulot, strategies. It's a war, my friend. If you go to war without strategies, you're not gonna succeed, right? And the Yisara has a lot of strategies. So you need to have weapons, you need to have maps on how to do it, but you have to know that you're gonna to have to fight harder. So if you're not ready that you're gonna, there's a fight going on, then you're gonna give yourself the extra strength necessary to do it. Or you're gonna ask Hashem to give you extra strength to do it. Number three, not doing anything attracts evil quickly to ourselves. Meaning, if you have free time and you don't do anything, you're bored, you're lazy, you're like, oh, you're like Going on, uh, vibrate. Works great. Oh, it's on. You didn't wake up still? Practicing. Oh, it's it's She's applying, applying right away. She's applying right away. It's Okay. So, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. Okay. Um, if, you, you, if you don't do anything, you cannot allow yourself to be bored. Technically, I don't know. First of all, I know it's not how people can be bored. So much to learn, so much to experience, so much to. There is good to not to do nothing. If you don't do nothing, you think you do it yourself. That's doing something. Yeah, that's the truth. I mean, the can be what they do it is doing something. What is not doing? Doing nothing not is doing it's not doing nothing. It's like you're playing like five hours uh, Call of oh, Duty no, yeah. or <laughs> Fortnite for five hours. You're not doing something. Uh, but doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So. Uh, the older you get, the easier it is. I used to have those bored bore time. Now I wish I had bored time just to relax. Uh, it's like my, I, I, don't, I don't have time I to be bored. <laughs> so uh, so we, have, we, we have to know that if you have nothing to do, meaning you need to have a plan. You need to have a type of say there, something that going on, something, a passion, a hobby, uh, a thing. You need to be involved. Ideally connected to Torah, obviously, um, because unless you are active in your life, you know you have a type of seder, especially uh, you, the detail is going to come in, and it's the best time. The worst things happens when we're bored um, and don't know nothing, don't know what to do. So that's the, usually when the worst thing happens. Um, number four, being slack in your work will also lead you to become evil. So. Don't, if you do work, do, do it good, do it strong, do it fast, do it, uh, because otherwise you, it's, it, it's, it's gonna become uh, not a quality work and it can even turn into something like, like let's say someone works by for, for a boss and you're not working like you should. So you, you're working slower, but it's like stealing time from the guy paying you, right? You, you can steal time. Uh, so if you, so that's the way, or you like, you become lazy, so I'll take a cigarette, I'll take a cup of coffee. Um, that's gonna, that's how the evil comes in. The evil of a lazy man comes slowly without notice. So similar to that, again, it goes together. Laziness makes people think they are wiser than others. Makes you arguing, why? Because, you know, I don't need to do that. I'm beyond that, I don't need, I need to, uh, I forgot the example he gives, but because you're lazy, you say, learning of Torah, I know, I know. So you, instead of, of, of saying, no, you need to do more stuff, you need to work at it, you, you say, look, I'm better than that, all those people. So you, you play the arrogant, you feel, think you don't have to work hard. So that can make you arrogant. Laziness can lead you to that. Every leniency that we do, we do needs to be double checked to make sure it didn't come out of laziness. So sometimes we want to be lenient. You know, 
חלב ישראל, חלב סתם, וואטאבר, הכשר או וואטאבר, זה, אה, 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 don't have the patience to wait six hours or five hours or whatever people wait. So you have to check. Each time you take a leniency, ask yourself, do I do that because I'm lazy or because I really understand or because I choose or sack for my ready or because it's uh, a hold by this opinion, halachic opinion, right? Um, once the dinner desire... Uh, no. <laughs> The dinner. <laughs> I guess I'm hungry. Once the inner desire is awakened, our body will be awakened and give you more strength and even more inner desire. Um, okay, so that's very important to do. Once you turn the machine on, right, uh, one of the things that, that uh, I, I, I try to do is actually it's connected to the next Uh, the one, uh, skip one, no? Running, doing things because it will protect you from laziness. So it goes together. Uh, running, well, the one of my favorite tools during the, this week is running. You do uh, running or walk fast. When you bo your body moves faster and is more activate, your in inner, your inside moves, it gets more excited. You know, it's like right now we're all relaxed, but if I put some music now, you start like dancing, even though you're not in a mood, in a few minutes, you, your inside is like, Because all the, the... Friday, we tried it on Friday. Didn't work. Didn't work? No. Oh, oh, Red Mix started yelling. yelling. Turn that yeah. robot music off. There's three lines. Right okay, now. but that because that's why it didn't work because of someone it's else. But yeah, 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 you can impose it on others. But um, the idea is once you do the things, like I know for me, sometimes when I go to shul, it's hard. Meaning, like, I like to dive alone. Right, take my time, right? So I go to show, so, so I, I go to show, but once I'm with the minion, and like, you know, we say Kaddish together, and then, you know, we are answering each other, I feel the Ahdus, then it gives me strength, so I'm, I'm more, I get more excited. But I had to push myself to go to show, and to, um, to dive in with the, with, with the Kaddish, because that's, that's like, otherwise it's, it's laziness. You stay home, ah, yeah, I'm okay, now I dive in alone. You're lazy, maybe. Which I can't say I'm lazy because the show is next door here. <laughs> right there, it's a Lubavitch show, right there. So, <laughs> what? I hear you, I hear you. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> all right. So, um, so, so it's something very important in, in, uh, in, in the Ramchal that, You, you move you outside, your inside will be affected. Fake it till you become it. No. Fake it, not to make it. You don't want to make it, you want to become it. Make it is like, I'm not making it. But I, I, I don't like to get trapped into to those uh, sayings. Like people with peace and love. Peace and love, please. Love and peace. What do you mean? You have, you have this, if only the love brings the peace. You have peace, it's not going to no, lead you to love. people that have peace with everyone. So like first make peace, then... No, 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 no. You won't have peace if you have love first. Okay. Anyways, I like to, I know I like to break the, the stereotype, like the, whatever people say that doesn't make sense to you. Okay. Before you act, do not delay. After the act has begun, hurry to finish it. Right? So you, that's, that, that, that's for the mitzvahs especially. We have a tendency to start and, and you know, you wait, you wait, you wait, and you get uh, pressure. To finish like day like a uh, say timeline not timeline deadline you have deadline to finish uh, where you have to wait you know i'll finish tomorrow don't push to tomorrow what you can do today that's a big thing in 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 no matai in no matai is that to physical uh applies to everything where do you wait like 
find something new you need. What would you wait? What makes you wait? Could be reasons. It's not so important. Like, yeah, I need to get take, I need it to be taken care of. If you need it, it it's important. But, I mean, yeah, uh, but if at the same time, if I'm not wasting time, and then like I'm not gonna get. But if I'm using my time, and this is being pushed off. Usually it's pushed off because it's of laziness. The, it, if, now, if it's something you need to do, why would you wait? Yeah, you could say, Tanya, I can do tomorrow. But if it's something that it's, that's a need, it's not just a want, you know, I want to, it's a different way. I want to visit, I need to visit. Someone is sick. So I want to visit. Yeah, it's a nice thing, but I need, it's really, it's, I need to visit. That's a mitzvah, yeah. Right. Not like, so not in, outside of a mitzvah. Yeah. Like I need a, I don't know, send application. Right. It's not done. <laughs> so is that something? No, it's it's bad. That also has to do with this. Yeah. But why? Because it's your your whole life has to be part of that. It's 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 learning to um. I say it's it's a different mode of it's it's a behavior behavior mode. It's it's not just with the mitzvot. Again, let's remember all the mitzvot is only for us to go back into our natural secular life and use those in those character traits in that way so it has to shape our secular life because otherwise it's, there's no possibility that you are the zaris in both but when it comes to physical things no it would affect it no then there will be a, an unbalance between your religious self and your like being imbalanced between the, your soul yeah my soul is super excited my body is like well, your soul has to be your body that has to be synchronized Imagine, you know, I go on, on, on the run with my wife and I say, oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to run. Okay, see you later. And then she, she's like, not running. Or the opposite, right? It's, you have to go together. Body and soul. Spiritual, physical. Balance. <laughs> no, it's true. It's, 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 it's really that we have a tendency to disconnect. And that's the danger. Um, It's it's a religion, we put religion, and that's my religious self, and then my secular self. No, that, that's, that's, that's not Judaism. Judaism is my life, my physical life is my religion too. It's, it's, we have a tendency, we're very good at being from, but when it comes to everyday life, we disconnect it somehow. We, and that, that's, that's not what Judaism is. It's, it's a, Judaism is not a religion. Judaism is, I leave everything within the, the soul within the body, the, the, the spiritual within the, the physical. I'm in shul, I'm so uh, as holy as in my house. People, they leave shul, they okay, I did my mitzvah, and then they forget about Hashem, and then they, say, they go to business or they go to their home. No, we can't. It's, 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 it's not like that. We, we, that comes to Shivisi Hashem and Yitamid. Eventually, you, we start realizing that um, you want to be on fire all the time, and it's time for relax but you have to be a, a, an excited being. We have to imitate the Malachim, right? The whole davening that we do, it goes one step after the other, and we have the Olam Asiya, Olam Yitzira, Olam Abriya, which is the Ofanim, the Chayot HaKodesh. And what, what, what's, what's different between them? If they are more and more intense, more and more fiery angels, more and more going towards Hashem, and we say, Kadosh, 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 you know, it's like, Berash Gadol. So it, it, it's um, the intensity of the Avoda and the intensity of your life. I mean, you know, when you meet someone and they're like, all right, guys, the church world today, are you happy? No, no, okay. <laughs> but, but I'm saying when someone is excited around you, it brings vibes of energy, right? So we have to... You know, if you go to a boss, like for an interview, and you walk slowly like that, and you sit like that, and it's a job for construction or that's the guy said, okay. Excuse me, <laughs> no, the way, no, no, it's true. You need to show like, oh, wait, show me, show me. I, I'm ready. What do I do? What do I do? I'm ready. That, that, right? that it's, a, it's a different outlook, the people, how people judge you. Even if you're not there inside like that, naturally, but you move yourself up, you make yourself excited. Make your body excited. Your soul is your energy inside. And you can use that energy to infuse your whole body with it. 
you can almost any moment make yourself go from, you know, you have someone is, is, is low, he's like, he, he's very tired at the end of the day and whatever, he's exhausted, had a hard day. And, and, and he just wants, he doesn't want to speak about it to anyone. He doesn't want to do anything. He just want to relax, jacuzzi, whatever. Jacuzzi, because I love jacuzzi. Anyway, so someone calls him, he say, hey, uh, do you want to come? There's a chance to win a million dollars. No problem, I'm here in two seconds. Like based, you can make a switch here in a second and switch your whole- There's a price for everything. The price for everything, yeah. And depending on it. Uh, by the way, uh, you know that girl uh, you was the last time? Yeah, she's interested in seeing you. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm in the mood. I'm in the mood. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Uh, and ten minutes ago, you told me you, you don't want to do. You want to see? Uh, Just food is enough. What food? Yeah, food, food. Yeah, there's a uh, free, uh, <laughs> free food, free food. Uh, I'm here. Uh, super juice, right? <coughs> so we, 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 we have to know that we have a switch here that we can turn on any second. And that if we want to be excited, we'll be excited. But you have to be in that mode. You have to understand. Uh, understand that. You can't always be excited. You can. It's not exciting. There's no such a thing. Well, because you think you can go lower. Obviously, there's ups and downs. We're, we're well, human it's, beings. It's only an excitement when it's something that comes out of nowhere. Like it's something different. But if the guy's always excited, then he's never excited. Mm, it depends. I, it, it's, I think you can always, I'm almost always excited. Almost always, yeah. But, but why don't, I don't look excited? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but it, it's, yeah, I think it's, it's again. I feel like excitement is something that comes, when something Pretty big well. comes. Uh, yeah, well, no, but it's, you can always get more and more excited. Yes, you can get always more excited. I, are you going to be more excited on your day of your wedding than your day engagement? Hopefully. Yeah, it's not like a. Like I'm shocked. Okay, right. Not yeah, that's something not different. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Like, Ooh, yeah. Nice. Like, like someone, some, like someone who is like in the, in the phase of loving someone, he's in love with someone. So he's like, yes, he, he, he's the whole day. He thinks of the person who is like, uh, he, he, he can't wait to be with the, to, to see the person. Right. So that's, that's an energy. The love energy is the strongest energy. But so if you run, there's a reason why people who run, right. And they do sports and they, they, it's a lot of activity. They get a high, they get a high. This is makes you high. Right. Without drugs, um, the no, it's an interesting. Rabbi Ari Kaplan says the goal of halacha is to achieve um, a spiritual high. Uh-huh. Yeah, so the whole the goal of that's Rabbi right, right, Ari Kaplan's quote, uh, and but we don't look at it like that because we think, oh, halacha, okay, it's lows. No, halacha means walking, walking so well that you reach a level where you. A hike? hike? Yeah. Yeah, from running, running, that's what I'm saying. No, it starts with Al Khab. I mean, he didn't speak in this context. He's he, he just speaking that halakha in general is the way you walk, meaning the way you, you are supposed to live your life, is supposed to lead you to a high. Meaning that um, halakha is something that teaches you how to walk and or ideally how to make it helps you how to run. Um, so, so the idea is to, to understand the faster something goes, the more energy there is, right? What's happened if something goes extremely fast? It goes back to energy, right? Speed of light, energy, you go at 300,000 kilometers per hour per second, you reach the speed of light, not all the matter becomes back to energy. Yeah? Pure energy, so electric, like electricity. This is the speed of light is 300,000 kilometers per second. So the more you go fast, the more you come closer to something energetic that comes closer to something spiritual. So it's not, it's not just like an idea, even in the physical it's world. Science, it's a science. Thing. Right, it's a science thing. Everything is science. The whole thing is science, it's all connected. That's just people disconnect the two, but it's all one thing. Okay, so the more you move fast, the more you're gonna have connect to that energy, Neshama energy, which is light energy. Okay. Okay, um, acting with Zrizus. 
is a sign that your soul burns in the service of its creator. When's the last time you will run to show? When's the last time to actually walk fast? Like, you know, sometimes you go in your house and you climb up the stairs quickly to get uh, your phone or whatever. When's the last time you, you climb up quickly to put on the or quick, quick, you run to put on the candles or uh, whatever you, 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 you can, you, you know, sometimes you drive fast to go to your friend's party. When's the last time you drove fast to go to, uh, uh, to do a uh, Biko Holi, right? We, 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 don't, we don't think. Not driving fast to have fun, but drive fast because you want, you're excited about the meter. Uh, we have to realize that, are you really, do you actually really love God? Are you excited what you're doing? God wants you to be excited. You're not excited? Learn to be excited. L learn about it. Le learn why, why this is supposed to make you excited. But we don't. We just do, okay, do the mitzvah, check. Mitzvah, check. Okay, one point, blah, 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 check. No, it's that. Hashem is not interested in that. Can you trigger of excitement as well? Love and understanding how much the, the action actually uh, gives you and, and others the, the consequence of it. If you, if you knew that by pushing a button, you will change the world, right? Or if you knew that you're going to go see someone we seek and, and, and and you knew in advance that by being by that person, that person is gonna feel better and, and be so m much more excited than before you came, you will be more excited about it. You know, I can affect that person. I have hash on them and it changes them. It makes, brings them happiness, and, and, right? And that's, that's a type of, it's a type of love. You really care about what you're doing. You really, you understand that there's, there's uh, something deeper. So l l listen, uh, listen to that. It's, it's, it's like so important. The heart's desire, right? The heart's desire. Oh, you, 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 you want? No, it's just burning out eyes. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so important. Yeah. That's good, the, the, the fan? No, now I can hear you better. Oh, okay. I knew you would just want to listen to my beautiful voice. <laughs> anyway, so. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I get the same thing. I get my dry eyes very dry when. Uh... Evansi, Evansi. Okay. So, listen to that, guys, 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 guys. Acting with uh, Zrizut. It's a sign that your soul burned in the service of his creator. It's just like that. The heart's desire and the soul's longing, meaning chefet salev and shukat haneshama, is Hashem's most desired aspect of our Vodat Hashem. That's what Hashem wants when you serve him. That's the most important part. There's not like, oh, do I have a mitzvah like that or like that? I'm so worried. Like, yes, that's also part of it, but only if, it, if, if it's connected. To your longing, I want to do. I want it's like I'm preparing like a romantic meal for my wife. So, so I have to get excited that, that I'm doing everything for for my wife to get excited. That's so I'm excited. I want my wife to be excited. So I'm I'm, I'm making things. But if, if I get so busy with with uh, just the 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 actual, um, I don't know how much it costs or like. Uh, did I do it right or not? No, it has to be the desire what you want to, um, that you, you want the person to feel that excitement, that desire when you do it. This is what Hashem wants. Before you do any mitzvah, you have to ask yourself how much desire I have in doing that mitzvah. That's what I'm doing. Right? So that's, again, we, we don't necessarily think like that. It's Hashem's most desired part of our life. And that's why we have all those, even in Shulchan Aruch, it's better to have a little bit of tefillah with true desire and true kavana than saying the whole thing. Oh yeah, you do the whole halakha, you say from A to Z, very nice. But there was like, there was a little hard. There was almost nothing authentic. You just wanted to finish to do what Hashem said, I have to do it. Hashem doesn't want that. He says Hashem's most desired aspect of our life is the heart's desire and the soul's longing. And that's why one of the, one of the um, best things to practice that when you daven, and I love to, uh, this is my favorite thing, daven, 
um, is uh, before you go back in Shmon at the end, you just stay there and say, God, you know, I did, I did my Shmon because you asked me to do it. But you know what? Now I just want to be with you. Not because you asked me, not because I have to do that, just because I just want to spend two minutes with you. That's it. Just to show you I love you. I just want to stay with you. Even without talking. You can talk also. You can tell him like, what I want to do. But then it changes everything because it's not anymore about just, oh, I'm here to dive in. No, I'm here to spend time with you, God. Right? So very important to, a, a very good exercise to do. Okay, now, how to acquire the results? Or the result? Number one, understanding the great value of doing the mitzvot and our obligation to do them. We are changing the world. We are different than non-Jews, and that's why we have that responsibility, and that's why what you do matter. What you do has, if we really knew that and were believed that, that what you did changed the world, we will be much more uh, on top of it and excited to do it. But we don't believe that. Uh, we, we, because we don't see it yet. Sometimes you see it, but in, inside of you, you have to, that's trusting God, on the, the and Emuna, that really what you do has an impact in the world. The reason we don't see that right away is because Hashem has to keep it for Olam If you saw everything you do, every action you do, the, its consequence now, you won't have it Olam You won't have free choice anymore, it's, it's over. You will be doing it because you know it's, it's good and you won't do anything bad either. Yeah, Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, the second one, yeah. Yeah, here it is. Number two, meditate on how much God gives you every second since birth. Recognize the, your death. Everything you have is a gift. So we have to realize that since you're born, you were given air, water, food. You were pampered. You had diapers. They didn't let you, you know, God... Uh, le, le, le put you into different um, uh, situation, but you always had a roof, you always had food, you always had breathing, and you were pretty healthy, you're alive. So how much can you even just, just for that, which is not counting like all the, like here, yeah, I'm like a billionaire, like, look at all, all this is extra, I don't need all that, right? I, I need food to make my wife happy. But when we move to Israel, it's a small apartment, Three, four rooms, goodbye, American dream and life. Why? Wow, Be- a mountain. Huh? By a mountain, <laughs> why? No, well, well, yeah, maybe, maybe, but I'm not expecting anything. I don't need anything. I need right, a roof, right. a so table, right. a chair, and whatever my wife needs. And cigarettes. And, no, no, a cigarette. And a lake. A lake, yeah. yeah. If you're underwater anyway, you can't smoke cigarettes. Yeah. Right. So. Equal, he's, he's an expert in that, yeah, for sure. Okay, so, but, but the idea is like, if we understand how much God loves us, do you know how much God loves you? I don't know, 45. 45%? Oh, 45, okay, that's a good number. 45, Adam. Okay. I know he loves me a lot. Well, more than that. No, it depends, you don't feel it. How do you know? You don't feel it? No, I feel it. What about everything that happened since your birth that was good? I love. Just what is it? Does. I don't know. Really? It's his job. Oh, really? It's his job. Oh, it's his job. <laughs> well, it's it, 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 his job. But he could put you uh, with uh, nothing, just like, uh, you know, um, one, one, in a, a much, much, much more simple life, you know, on top of uh, in China or with people who are extremely poor or in Africa. <laughs> Meaning you, you live a good life, right? You know, you're, you're part of the one, like three or five percent of the most richest people in the world. Besides the comparison, like you go to these these guys in India and don't have nothing, they think they're happy because they don't know any better. Absolutely, absolutely. There's some billionaire Arab sheiks who look at you and they're like, "How how do you live the way you live? It's not possible." It's true. It's always, they don't know any better, but you know better. You you, you also don't know. You have the old. Yeah, you have the old. You know better. You know what's good, what's bad, you know what's extra, you know what's needed. Right, but it's not the point. No, it is the point. <laughs> the point is, do you have so much more in your life? You have millions of stuff that are extra that technically you don't need. 
it's nice to have them. But all those extra is, right? Did you, did, did, did you ever thank Hashem for being beautiful? Well, isn't that love? God makes you beautiful. You know, people who are there deformed. Why is that not love? You know, what is it? No, I don't know. I never thought. It you want? I know that's why I'm here. It's your creation. Hashem, he designed creation. He forms you in the morning. In, in the in the morning, he forms you when when before he creates you, and he makes us with be beautiful he makes us he gives us so much so we have to we have to appreciate that all that is a sign of love from god we have been not taught how to love god and and how to feel his love we think like god in his heaven i'm here and sometimes he sends an email a nice check to the mail a nice job there there no every second of your life everything that's happened every extra things that you have this is the books the millions of books this this is love. Any thing extra than needed is love. And what you need also is even more love because that's what you need. So the moment you start re uh, understand, feeling how much God loves you, you get a stack of hakaratatov. You start feeling, well, you start feeling that, that, wow, God really cares about me. It's like a parent who gives you everything that you need. Right? Now, not all parents do that, but... Right, absolutely. So it, it is harder in those cases because we like, God gives us our parents, so we like, hey, well, well, that doesn't feel like love. So in this case, we have to kind of readjust and see what are the areas where we can feel the love. You can have love, feeling love from a best friend. You can feel love from brothers, sisters, from, uh, some a teacher you can love from uh, well, all, all, all different ways but the idea is like we are we're given almost all the time more than we need and we have almost all the time what we need so when you feel that you know if i come right now and give you a million dollar you're gonna love me a little bit more don't you think a little bit more no not much okay what, what do you want Lamborghini? Ah, Lamborghini. Money, yeah, no, money doesn't That's true. So, you want a hug? What do you want? <laughs> so what? But I'm go saying, chill. Go chill in Thailand for like four or five months. In where? Thailand. Oh, Thailand. Yeah. No, no, no. I know. No, not. It's not the the amount. But it's the giving. It's like I'm giving something to you that you can use. Something. You see a lot of parents. They just. How they show love, they just give and give and give. It's not. Yeah, but they, they do that, but they don't care of the kids. Like, like that. You do the mitzvah Hashem, but you don't really, there's no love in it. It's not like out that's, of. That's hey, a, we know Hashem really cares about us, but he does the same thing also. It's no. not money, it's different stuff. So maybe it's different. Well, yeah, we have to learn to see the way God loves us. And, and, but it, we have to come to a point where it becomes overwhelming. Just, just the fact that I'm alive, I can breathe, I'm healthy, that should be already enough. In the morning, you say, Shastali called Sarki, right? Shastali called Sarki. So what, what, does, what does that correspond to? To shoes. You know that every one of the brachos in the morning corresponds to something else you do. So kids go film, you start moving. Okay, you put your feet on the ground. Machines uh, together, you put that whatever belt or whatever, but Chastali called Sarki is you put your shoes. You have shoes, you have everything. You don't have anything else. You can, you can walk and you can go to places and do your business. But isn't that a high level to like notice the love for the basic small thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, no, I'm just saying. I'm because it kind of made it sound like as if, well, just think about it. Obviously, he loves you, but I think this is a much higher level. No, I think, I think I, obviously, it's, we're speaking about the highest level of being in love through everything that's happened throughout your life. Gamzuletova almost. It's a very high level. Obviously, we cannot be all the time like that. But the more we reflect, the more we're aware of um, what's happening, the more we respond with zrizus. The more we tend, like, uh, if, if my parents ask me to do something, I'm going to do it with more excitement, with, well, as fast as I can to make them happy because, you know, they have invested so much in me, I want to be able to reciprocate, right? So, the same thing, your best friend asking for, uh, use for something. Yeah, sure, I'll do it tomorrow now. Uh, like, 
you can rely on your best friend to to be there for you immediately right a real friend is at least one good you know a real friend at you at three o'clock in the morning you can call them and they'll come but it's only a real friend because they they gonna have this result for you because they truly love you they truly care so and through that we can see god's love um and and um and, and we try to have that in our Avodat Hashem also. Okay. Uh, by the way, if you do, you know, last time I was doing a, a list of just what's in my kitchen. It's like, you know, like five pots and like 30 dishes and fleshy and mechik and parve and like uh, a, a, a pan and then a barbecue. And then like I have like five shelves just of things to cook. I take me actually one pot and one pan, that's it. Like, but we have so much. We used to eat with our hands. But when I have like 20 dishes for guests like that, wow, you, you go like for an hour, I was still, still in the kitchen, <laughs> right? So we don't realize how much we have. We have a lot. Um, we have to go. Okay. So I'll just leave it like, I don't know. Yes, well, the, the uh, especially the, well, the tools, right? Okay, so I'll go through it on the way. Absolutely. And I don't want to rush the Yeah, yeah, no, of course. Um, Sorry, I was. Uh, no. Okay. My pleasure. Zizut. Do zizut. You're applying right away. Zizut, gotta go. Let's do it. Good. All right. Bye. Okay. Next. Well, let's go a bit quicker because I also have to give you a tree. What prevents us from acquiring zizut? Whatever promotes laziness, but mostly desire for bodily ease and rest, the hate of effort. You have to love effort. You know, some people they just hate effort. But you have, life can be two things. It can be an adventure or it can be a burden. You want your life to be hell, you want your life to be an adventure. So you can transform your whole thing into, um, what? Well, someone is here and, and cut you off uh, on the street on the, when you're driving and you can, you know, do Israel style and get like, man, 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 man. Yeah, finally I get the chance to use my own. Or, or, or to or, or go like that and get angry and upset or say it's an adventure right now that guy is trying to make me angry he won't succeed <laughs> right you change everything into an adventure but if you get like upset like that and then you lose control and then you you ruin your midot lose your alamaba for getting angry or lose your assumed presence but if you make it like an adventure you know everything is part of a test everything is a challenge and here, he didn't get you. It's like uh, Jumanji, you know, Jewish Jumanji. Yeah. You go into the game, ta -da! and then you have to have a test. Yeah? How many lives? How many lives? <laughs> you have quite a few actually, but uh, I won't take any chance. <laughs> okay, um, love, of, love of pleasure to its fullest, meaning if you love too, pleasure too much, you're not gonna be able to succeed. Because you're gonna be too attached to you. No, yeah, no. What do you mean? Everything's up to you. God made certain people like pleasure more than others. Yeah, hundred percent. But 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 it's not Some bad. People like doing nothing. I well, know people like that. They like sitting in bed and doing nothing. Right. Well, that's that's the pleasure. Oh, the pleasure of doing nothing. Yeah, but their Some pleasure, their more pleasure more is not nearly sure. as, as because, much as me going out and doing. Uh, right, because because you have a probably a bigger soul. And therefore, you will be challenged more in that area. But remember, I, I want the, in the book, um, book, Rishis Chokma, you know, Ahava, he says there, unless you taste the sin, the desire and the pleasure of sin, you won't know what it means to really have, become, uh, have kina for Hashem and to have desire for Hashem. Meaning, those, even those experiences, even those failures sometimes, those things helps you understand how you can be excited for Hashem and how much pleasure you can for Hashem. All, and you remember these five levels of pleasure and each one gives you physical, emotional, intellectual, spiritual, and divine. Okay. Physical pleasure, emotional pleasure, intellectual pleasure. That's really smart. It's like, uh, like yeah, meaning in life, like you won't live for a purpose. Okay, and then, then there's uh, spiritual, spiritual pleasure. And then divine pleasure, because God is not spiritual. So what? Uh, 
Uh, pause your answer. It's divine. <laughs> it's, 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 it's being with God. We don't know that. Don't know. It's, we don't know yet. You, this is one of our experiences. Yeah. If you can have it. If, if, if I'll, probably, I'll probably go to hell, so I, I won't. Uh, I'm sure you can have a sample here, but. Right. Well, um, we can, I guess you can have a taste a little bit of it when you say Shema on a high level and be one with him. I'm sure you have moments. You know, Shema is kissing God, right? What? Huh? You know, when, it, uh, when you kiss your, someone you like, right, a girl, do you have your eyes open or closed? What? Exactly. That's Shema. You don't see, you don't see what you feel. You, you, it's the, the, the Shema is you close your eyes and you say, I want to be one with you, God, my, my whole essence. No way, Mama. So you actually <laughs> start him, they do like that. Shema is like that. Right? Because the whole idea is that you're, is the, is the Ram says that you're kissing Hashem at that moment. You're becoming one, you're letting your whole self. It's not about seeing, it's not my body anymore. You're kissing because you're entering Hashem, becoming one with him, basically, at that moment. So... So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Fall in love with God. You can kiss God. Do you know that you can kiss God? It's exciting. Okay. Um, excessive fear regarding what the future may bring. So I was forced kissing him. So. No. Yeah. Oh, till now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah forced to call it rigged. You know. use it, brother. Like, <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's the problem. That's why we don't enjoy kissing anymore. If you force someone kissing someone else, that's like, that. That's what I've done with me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a type of abuse. It's a type of abuse. Religion can become an abuse, and and um, that kind. right. It uh, that kind of abuse. Mm -hmm. So, excessive fear regarding what the future may bring. If you have to worry about what's going to come, then you're never going to actually be active and proactive and do things. This will lock your spirit into a prison of bodily traits. Uh, body, body habits. Um, okay, what are the four solutions for it? So, number one, understand we are here for effort, work, not for ease. Number two, so when you work in the morning, you say, I'm here to be challenged. I'm here to work. I'm here to grow on my mid-dot. I'm here to transform. So, and you understand that life is like that, then you're not afraid of effort. You're actually looking forward for challenges and effort. You don't ask for it. They're going to come on your own. But, and your whole life is exciting because anything that happens is part of the adventure. Anything that's fine is part of a test that you want to pass because you should prove you love to Hashem. It becomes exciting, right? Live like a soldier, <coughs> always ready for battle. Work on bitachon, the future is in its hand, meaning that everything that happens is in the hand of Hashem. So don't worry too much about what's gonna happen. Uh, just a soldier, cannot plan everything. He has to learn how to revise. So you don't worry too hard. You have to, you know, So we have to believe that Hashem is going to be there on the battlefield with you and he's going to help you. Number four, Salma Vechetko, rejoice in what your portion is. We spoke about it. The more you're happy with what you are, the more you feel Hashem's taking care of you, the more you love him, the more you want to reciprocate and do things for him out of love. And number five, differentiate between faith and folly. Don't be a fool. Don't put yourself in danger. Don't put a double fence. So um, you have to know not to um, meaning it's connected to the bitachon where you're gonna you're gonna or you put too much fences. So you're not you're too scared. So you're not gonna do the thing. In the same time. Like, oh no, I, I can't go to Beth Midrash, it's raining, maybe I'm gonna fall. Don't be full. Uh, you know, don't be, live a life that is balanced and, and, and that makes sense. Um, number six, don't use fear as an excuse for laziness. Lots of fears just come from laziness, right? Oh, no, I don't wanna go to college. I don't wanna, you're scared of, of uh, I was not so good in high school, so now, now I'm probably not gonna be good in things. So you don't end up doing things because you're afraid of what the consequences of your laziness. It's uh, not laziness only, but um, come you don't want to do the work. Most people drop out of school. Yeah. Not, uh, most 
the successful people in America, the most successful ones, are high school dropouts. Yes. Sure now. Yeah, like these guys are not people who are who got and succeeded. These guys are not following whatever they brought up. Like they're following whatever they feel like they're supposed to follow. They choose it for themselves. You you mean high school, the Jewish high school, or American? No, no, in general, Jewish too. If, if, if today the the kids are not told about any purpose in life, they're not guided. The, the kids have no idea what to do. They're bored with their life. There's too much good. Also, there's not enough work. In the past, when I have you go to school, that was your survival. You and then you went to work and you brought money for to pay for the family. And today, there's absolutely the kids have no achorayos to anything. They. No, the question is why those. The ones who, why they succeed? Yeah, because they, no, no because, oh, they that's what I'm saying, sorry. Think they should do. No, I oh, think the, the, the because the ones who drops out, they are, they're not satisfied with that type of system, which is they, they want to become independent and strong and uh, they don't let others do, well, then they want to take, um, I say. have more work to prove. Right. Want to prove and, and you, you prove yourself, you prove to yourself and you, you, you are more an individual. School, anything mass production like school, all that, it makes us a little bit like sheep. So when we are not sheep and we're not just followers and you want to be independent and stronger, so the dropout usually are the rebellious ones, but the good ones because the ones that, that is rebellious good and rebellious bad, but the ones who are going the right direction are taking a stand to be who they are and grow and make themselves from scratch. And that's very strong. Um, okay, so um, I won't have time to go through all the tools. We'll go through it. Uh, uh, yeah, you go through I it. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Here. Wait, yeah. No, no, you have it. That's the tools. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This week was week, week three, step three. So, good. so you're gonna have nine different things, and then um, you have a little tefillah that you can say every day in the morning, and bezat Hashem. Uh, we'll be able to be excited more in life and show God how much we love Him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for listening and changing the world.